Consumer prices rose 8.5%, which is high, but lower than expected. This has had, a, has had a positive effect on the stock markets and thus the crypto markets. But what is going to happen from here with Bitcoin and all? Really, that's what we want to know. Well, we have Paul from Defini joining us again today for a deeper analysis to look at the price and what we can see is happening in the price as well as some macro things. Today, we're going to look at Bitcoin. Ethereum. We're also going to look at Solana, OMI, Networks token, Illuvium, Form, ShopX, Cornucopia's token, and KuCoin. All picks from viewers of our last video with Paul. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel. I'm your host, Jay Rain. If you like money and crypto and you're looking for a real investor's take on the crypto market, join the Rainmaker family. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a crypto investor myself. Paul is an investor in many, many things, not just crypto. Special shout out to our Patreon members because we do have a private Discord there. Patreon members get access to. Now, if you haven't already, make it rain on that like button. Strap in for the show. And let's welcome Paul from Definity. Paul, so good to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great to be here. Markets are feeling much better at the moment, aren't they? All the doom and gloom are from a few weeks back when <laughs> everybody was putting negative comments you were saying. And um, those are usually some really interesting signals. And uh, I think we talked about that at the time, um, that we could be approaching a low. So things look much better. Uh, we're not out of the woods. Clearly, we're not out of the woods. But... Um, Things are moving in the right direction, I would say, to kind of summarize the whole view, macro view of the markets. Yeah, it's good to have some momentum coming back in the market. It's fun, uh, you know, just kind of heartening, too much doom and gloom. Just we're emotional creatures as human beings. We like to have a relief rally, even if there might be pain ahead. Sometimes it's nice just to have these breathers. It's kind of like when you're swimming laps in a pool and that's what it's like during a crypto winter or a bear market. You get really tired. It's kind of nice to like be able to hold on to the side for a second and rest. So I'm, I'm really interested in looking forward to uh, your take on some of these on the price action, some of what we're going to look at. I wonder if we could also look at the bigger picture and what you see is going on with some of the macro things. Yeah, like absolutely. The US dollar and what you see with interest rates. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the usually the starting point for me to see how the markets are operating. If we go to, first of all, the 10 year US yield, um, which is the bond yield. So this is what interest rate you will get for holding government bonds. So for those of you that are new to this, um, th this is obviously extremely safe. So you can buy bonds of companies and those companies may or may not go bust, but you wouldn't expect the US government to go bust, which is why this is the safest of the safe products out there. And as inflation has been going up, this the yields have been going up and the market has been demanding a higher rate of interest from the US government to buy their bonds. Now, we, we spotted a reversal in that trend or a potential reversal, which was this head and shoulders pattern, which played out... Um, in sort of phase one. So this should be the beginning of a much larger move to the downside, but you can never say never. We might have one more move to the upside before it, it, it turns over again. We will keep our options open, but it's, so far it's been working well and this is topped out. So this gave a very clear signal that the market was going to go or yields were going to go lower. And our expectations were that commodity prices were too high. The American people were being squeezed too much and you get what you're seeing today in today's numbers demand destruction where they stop spending as much and prices start to fall or not rise as fast so that has had an impact on the market's expectation on the us dollar and what the fed will do further out in terms of interest rates so from september onwards my view was that the market was too hawkish which meant they, they were expecting too many increases in rates um, and that's been driven by what the Fed have been saying, to be fair. But when you're looking at the markets ahead of what the Fed are going to do, you know that, um, you know, if you can see storm clouds rolling over the horizon and they haven't seen them, you know, they're going to be changing their views and uh, reaching for the umbrellas. So um, that's kind of what's going on at the moment. That's what we're seeing in the numbers. And this is a chart of the US dollar index, which is like a dollar share. If you, if you want to think of it that way, this goes up when the dollar's strong. 
it's against a basket of currencies, not all currencies, just the, some of the major ones. One of the biggest elements of this is the euro. And uh, so it tracks the inverse of the US dollar against the euro currency pair. So this has been in a very strong trend. Um, we were bullish going back kind of last year. So we've been bullish for a long time, but we changed our view um, because of what I was seeing in the yield market. And this started to turn down. So it's turned down in kind of like phase one. And this morning in the UK, which is where I am, it was trading around 106 and sitting in a kind of halfway house area. Then we got this in, the inflation number out. And the market has moved down very aggressively and broken this upward trend line. So the more the dollar weakens, that if you think of it this way, um, the market, the dollar is being supported by how much interest rates will be higher than other countries. If they're not going to be as high, then it means that there's borrowings obviously cheaper and people will start to speculate again. So this moves money into more speculative products. So we've been in a, on a risk on basis, i.e. people looking to take more risk for, I would say, about two months now, maybe a little less. But around that time, we suspected a turn. And now we've been sort of consistently saying it looks like this is the low and cautiously bullish so we look at the s p that made a low and it's been trading higher actually i thought it would stop around here um which is where it is now and then come back and then rally again but it seems to be continuing up so you know uh, that's a good sign it's still got a trend line to break there um but in terms of the interest rate profile in terms of the dollar and what's been happening to cryptocurrencies they've all been moving pretty much in the right direction to show that uh, risk on is a is the place to be. So one other element is gold. Uh, so when the dollar weakens, gold tends to go up. And this is right on a trend line here. So we're right on a crossroads. And if this can break through, we might see, it might surprise people that we could see extended dollar weakness. And everyone's kind of positioned for a stronger dollar. I think they might be revising that view um in the next quarter so it's um w w again as i said at the top of the show we're not out of the woods these are just really good positive signs that if they continue then i would expect the other markets the other asset markets like equities like commodities and also cryptocurrencies to continue to move higher that's fantastic news Let's take a look at the Bitcoin charts, if that's yeah. okay. Uh, thanks for bringing up the gold chart. That's really interesting to see exactly where that's at. Yeah, that's it's literally right on that trend line, right? Right there. on a trend line, and and you can see how it uh, it was collapsing as well. So it was going down very aggressively when Russia, um, when the war in Ukraine, whatever's going on there, was announced. It was around here, so you saw the spike, mm -hmm. and then it continued up and matched the high but didn't manage to break out and that was a bit of a, a warning sign because it wasn't responding properly and then whoever bought it here obviously got forced out and probably doesn't want to touch it again and that's a, a pretty good sign that this could be you know at a major base and this is starting another another new trend and remember the dollar has been one of the strongest currencies out there gold has been strong against say sterling and the Japanese yen and the euro because those currencies have been weak. It's yep. just that the dollar has been so strong. So the fact that it's moving up against the strong dollar and trying to put a low in is, is a good sign. So again, this is like phase one, very similar to what we're seeing in the Bitcoin chart where, you know, we've had this downward trend and it's, we've talked about this downward, uh, this, sorry, this reversal phase and how it's trying to push upwards. Um, so we drew in this trend line and this lower, this is the first trend line that we bullish trend line we'd had, we drew in for a long time. So we drew it in around here and the market has accelerated slightly, but not, not massively, but it's, it's enough to be positive on it. And there are some challenges ahead. So this is looking, if I just zoom into it, this is potentially looking triangular. So it's hit a resistance, come off, hit another resistance, come off again, hit a resistance, come off again. As long as it can stay above this 22, 30, 39, 40 area and then break through this high, 
it's <clears throat> it's still working within this accelerated price action, which is good. Um, it's a little more muted than some of the other ones. If I jump to the Ethereum chart, you can see that's off to the races. We had a much cleaner base. We talked about that base when it completed, um, which was at this 1280 level, massive resistance level, very, very clear uh, when it broke it. And then we said the next point was at this 17 20 18 to 20 area um this very thick line which was if you remember that's what precipitated this big move to the downside um so i i thought it would struggle to break through here because that was such a big level um and it's chewed around it for a little bit but now it's squeezing higher which is really good so this is leading the way ethereum is leading the way so i think um the next target for that would be 2143 and if it can get through that, then, you know, we're, we are cooking with gas, as it were. But this is, I mean, this is a big move in itself. It's, um, it's a massive move. Gigantic, it doubled. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really big move. So, but you, you wouldn't think it because it doesn't, there isn't the sentiment out there for cryptocurrencies at the moment, which is a good thing, really, because this is what happens. This is why I use technicals, because usually in that very negative sentiment, um, you know, when you go on the street and you look at what people are saying, you see something that says technically the market is going to change its trend. And it's not 100 percent, of course, because nothing is. But that is a classic sign that we did have some disparity between Bitcoin, which hadn't properly based. It was really messy and not clear. And Ethereum. And at the time, I wasn't completely sure which was giving us the good steer, whether it was the Ethereum leading the way that was saying, come on, let's all let's just be bullish or is it you know bitcoin saying it's muted just be more cautious and short the the, the rally but in those instances i think you well i think we pointed it out as well that we looked at some of the altcoins which were performing really well so it suggested to me with everything else putting all the pieces together that we could be positive we could maintain a positive view cautiously positive until we start to see those um, those signals reverse. So at the moment, those signals are, are, are staying in there. It's just that Bitcoin is just not really joining this trend um, as much as I would like, but there's time. We've seen that before. We've seen it when Ethereum's outperformed and Bitcoin looks like it's not going to move. And then suddenly Bitcoin just goes flying and Ethereum doesn't do a lot. So I'm, I'd be interested to see whether this is the week that Bitcoin plays catch up in a big way. Um, now, I, I think Apart from this resistance here, you can see that really sharp crash type decline. So around 25 and a half. I think this should be good for at least 28 and a half before we consider it turning into any any form of downward move. Um, now, I could be wrong, and I'm, I'm just going to maintain a positive view yeah. whilst this upward trend line is in effect. So I'm using this lower trend line as a, um, a cautiously positive view. So we can review it. Obviously, we're going to review it week to week, and I'm looking at day to day. But um, if it can get to this point and break through, that for me would be a massive signal. That would be amazing. We would all be really excited. Um, since we last spoke, Coinbase and BlackRock announced the deal, right? Um, what did you think of that? Did you see that story come across what was about a week ago? Actually, it shows you how little of the fundamentals I look at. I didn't, I didn't notice it. I didn't look at it. Uh, um, <laughs> no worries. It helps keep uh, your price analysis clean. Yeah. I mean, because I think we, we were talking about, I mean, I, I hear stuff from you and I hear stuff from Manu. Um, you know, who might say, oh, this has happened or that's happened. Um, and I, that, that's where I like to, to, to get information from and, and superficially look at the headlines um, because yeah. everything's in telling me what's going on in the charts. Or well, that's how well, I like to look at things. But you, you, enough, that, that announcement came just barely. Now, usually um, there's things that come before they make an announcement like that, like maybe they were stocking up. But essentially what the partnership allows them is for the 200 institutions that or 220 major institutions, they have a system. I'm trying to remember the name of their system that it gives uh, access to all of their institutions 
to buy Bitcoin through Coinbase. And so Coinbase would likely custody or, or whatever. So BlackRock's not trying to develop their own thing. They're going to work with Coinbase and let Coinbase handle that part. But then mm -hmm. that allows all the institutions, because BlackRock is a combination or amalgamation of a lot of funds that really direct their money through BlackRock. So that's mm. going to allow all these huge institutional players access to first Bitcoin is what the announcement said. Right. Right. That, I mean, that's, that's interesting. Um, I, I wonder whether that, um, I have this, this, this old memory of Nat West and Yahoo doing a deal. I remember walking into a branch in Nat West and seeing Yahoo on the, on the side of it. And I thought that that's, interesting because you've got a much bigger uh, financial older sort of um less kind of fast moving institution that's tying itself to a, a very fast moving young blood institution and i wonder how long that will last before the big institution decides that they want to play on their own and sort of work out the technology and create their own product but you know, obviously, it's it's a bullish sign for the sector in, in, in general. So I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, I think a few weeks back, you were talking about Celsius and what had happened there. And from what we could see, that, that didn't really impact the market. So the important thing is that positive news should be seen as a, um, a positive outcome, i.e. We, we've got to see how the market reacts to positive news. If it doesn't react positively, then there's a problem. So, um, I mean, I would have thought Bitcoin could have got a bit more on that news, given given how how bullish it is. But, you know, I, I think um, these, these things tend to go in waves. So there's still time this week for it to break out. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, it's already gone. Um, but yeah, so no, it's good, good that that's happening um, from a from an industry perspective and it's the sort of thing you would expect really what's funny is the attention span is so short right like that was totally like the news like last week that is like such old news already um mm. although a lot of times this stuff it's just because like we have such a tor uh, short attention spans these days but i kind of note those kind of things the impact mm. from that come down the road when these institutions start buying bitcoin right so BlackRock, with maybe some of their discretionary money, might have been buying at those lows. They might have been looking at the chart saying this is a reversal signal. Absolutely. And buying over the counter. That we don't know. That's speculation on my part that they were doing. But usually there's a lot of actions that happen before they make a public announcement, right? Because they yeah. know public announcements like this can change momentum in the market. So I think whether that's the 200 or 120, what is it? I forget the number. I did a video on it where I had all those numbers in front of me just like a week ago and covered it in depth because I think the impact is big, but some of that big impact comes later, right? So yeah. when 200 or something institutions start buying Bitcoin and they start diversifying 1% or 2% because they direct over like, it's like 4% of the U.S. economy is... Uh, through BlackRock, right? Or the amount of money that changed hands last year goes to 4% of the U.S. economy. And so it, it's a large amount of funds. And if they, say, put 1% of their portfolios into Bitcoin, that would have a huge impact on the crypto market. Yeah. I, I, the person I would ask is um, Manny Chowdhury, who's um, the uh, co-founder of Definity. I mean, he would... I would be asking him what he thinks. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, very, that's a great idea. I'm going to ask him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he's much more in touch with that. Yes, um, but um, yeah. So I mean, on paper, it sounds like uh, it's some good news, and and don't we need it? Yeah, exactly. Let's take a look at some of these altcoin picks. These are from viewer picks from the previous video. Now, the previous video was two weeks ago because last week I was enjoying some sun in the Bahamas. You can see. It. A little bit more of a tan going on. Amazing time with Miss Rain. Yeah. Should have just come to London. It's the bloody hot here. <laughs> Nobody goes to London for sunny beaches. But no, that's go to London for culture, right? And uh, yeah. archaeology and just history. And I have to say, I've, I've walked around central London 
and you hear American tourists and I've looked at the weather sometimes and just gone, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's, not, it's not always like, well, actually it is, it's, it's, um, yeah, that's why we talk about the weather so much in, in England because it's so variable. It's like one day it can literally be fantastic, like the best weather. And the next day it's, it's like, or even within the same day, it just changes and becomes, you know, awful. And so, um, yeah, I mean, European countries and and I guess America, you, in, depending on where you are, you have much more consistent weather. But there we go. We're having a heat wave here. So and uh, everybody's complaining about it, of course, because about the heat wave, heat wave with humidity. Right. So there was some humidity in the Bahamas. It was beautiful and gorgeous. The reason we wanted to go there is the crystal blue water. It was just absolutely incredible. Lovely. So we're going to spend some more time in there in the future. Definitely. Brilliant. That was our first trip to the Bahamas. First Amazing. Trip. So let's take a look at, let's start with Ekomi. And I have huge bags of Ekomi. This actually didn't, wasn't my suggestion. This came from one of our viewers. Yeah. And we cover Ekomi frequently on the channel because um, I think it's one of the ones that I personally like the best. I, yes. I think it's got uh, great potential. Now, this history doesn't go back very far. I wonder if there's a history that goes back farther. Um, yeah, I, th I think I, I popped it on the... Um, uh, right, I, I did put it on... Ascendex. Comey Ascendex. Uh, will... No. Comey. And then... Yeah, if you see one that has to the right Ascendix, I'm looking at it on Trading View, and it gave me just a few options. Yeah, it's uh, it hasn't got Ascendix. It's got Let me Patrick. Yeah. Let me um, show you what I was able to find. So on Trading View, I pulled up Omi USDT. Yeah. And then Ascendix right here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's 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 this oh i see yeah it's just the same oh thing. there we go yeah a bit more data, yes yeah. much better history because i want that yeah. full as much of that history as we can get sure absolutely um yes yeah, so um so what we got going on here we we had this this downward trend which was pretty much mirrored by the rest of the markets and then with this attempt to go into new lows which it's for me, would have been a massive sell because, of course, that's still within the downward trend. Then the market came back up, so it negated that sell signal, and this created a base. So we had a basing signal, very similar to the Ethereum base, where we had very strong structurally um, present resistance that then broke through. And so this was a great signal. So we got this buy signal which has since come back and it's chewing around it, which is a bit frustrating because I'd like this to have been a clean break and for it to kind of run a bit further. Um, now, this level here that I've put as the, the kind of target area, that would be a, a resistance zone where I would have expected to react from. So, of course, it doesn't have to do that, but I would have thought it could have at least gone that far before it came off. But having said that, you know, if this is still developing this upward trend which is great so this trend is good it's moving averages of this medium term moving average was down see how it's gone flat we now just need that to start turning up i um, mean it will do if it can just consolidate here but overall i think that that was the the low point where i would have said look the selling's happened it's happened here because it tried to get low and that that got blocked it got turned around there was strong buying there saying no no this trend's over that was the first sign and now it's moving up from here so i think as long as it can hold um above this developing trend line we can't really draw one in here now because it's broken this line here so i want to see support forming very close to this moving average and then for it to turn up and then break this resistance to keep the trend going so I'm anticipating that. I'm going to stay bullish on it. I think cautious stops would be below this uh, 13852 level. So this support here, where it would be like, okay, let's throw in the towel because this, this isn't working, would be if it breaks this 12752 area here. So at the moment, you know, it's allowed to have a consolidation because um, this was a decent move. It's a big move. So 
we just need it to gear up for this next phase and for the moves in the the majors to kind of wash over into these these altcoins so we want to see it pick up now if you were to rate this for yourself a buy wait or sell what would you say well i'd buy i'd be a buyer here i'd be a buyer with a with a stop yeah this is a buy for me as well and it was one that moved ahead of the other markets as well so i think it's it's fair that it's having a consolidation here before it, it does its next move yeah um, min- oh sorry go ahead no i was just gonna say so it it, it moved quite aggressively ahead of some of the other markets so uh, fundamentally i like this one a lot uh it, you know they're very res revenue positive they made some improvements that have come together um uh, yeah so Everyone who follows this channel deeply knows that I'm a huge fan of this because I talk about it frequently. Let's look at the next one. Let's take a look at Drive. And we haven't looked at this for a number of weeks. Yeah. So this is, um, again, this was very strong downward trend that we've been operating on for for quite some time. Descending triangle there. Minor double bottom triggered here. So that would have been a short-term attempt at a low. Which, as I was saying, maybe you may have heard me say before, that sometimes when small patterns fail, they turn into bigger patterns and more significant. So if you look at how this base has run round, it's gone down, slowed down, gone sideways, 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 and now it's moving up. So this is bullish. It's a bullish sign. Um, I don't, I'm not pleased about this move here. I think that's a, that's a little bit. Uh, I would wonder why it's it's sort of spiked down like that. I'm hoping that that's just a bad print on the price rather than where it's traded. But this is a double bottom. So this is base one, base two, one two, and the trigger point is pretty much where it is now. So it can, it can chew it a little bit. That's fine, but I want to see it moving higher. So from that pattern, it's it's a buy. So for me, it's formed a base. It's on a trigger point. Where I'm wrong is I would just draw a really shallow trend line in. Um, you know what I'm like. I want a, I want an exit point just in case I'm wrong because I am wrong um, sometimes. And, you know, um, I want to take that into account before I get in. So if it breaks this up with trend line, then I'd have to say, no, it's it the, the trade is over. But this for me is... Um, a decent base it's a basing pattern it's been doing it for a while and i'd like to see some acceleration that would be really good but for the moment it's um it's a, it's triggering a base which is a buy yeah fantastic for me this is a buy as well it's right in that point right it's come back down and that wick line might be from one seller that had that some of these all points have such low liquidity that one seller puts in a big sell order and that could be what wicked it all the way down if they had enough funds and then it just went right back up. So to me, I'm looking at that and it's like, okay, so it is at a decision point, whether it's going to continue the breakout to the upside or break down. And I, I like this kind of point It's come back and retest the, uh, hopefully a support and ready to run some more. Awesome. Let's take a look at, network we haven't looked at this token in a while now this is a metaverse play now they came about a lot later than sandbox and decentraland but they launched early last year and their token did really really well when all the metaverses took off and we've seen some price action on it recently yeah um yes absolutely so as you probably you may remember for some moons ago, I was um, bullish on mana, which, um, but I'm always interested in alternatives. So this is obviously a really good alternative to be looking at. Um, and what's been going on here? Well, so you can see this, this was the major downward trend, which everything was experiencing. And we've got this, this basing pattern, which is really nice. It's very smooth where it went all just quiet and then suddenly sprung out. Um, at the start of that trend. Um, so this is operating on a new upward trend, which is which is great. So having a little consolidation here, which is fine, um, given where it's moved from. But I think, again, for, for me, this this is 
a bullish trend. So I'm going to go with it. Now, I know it's it's kind of fighting against this major downward trend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is reversing. It's sort of swimming against this big sort of downward trend that might mean it needs to do a bit more work to break this trend line before we can start talking about a move back to a dollar 15 or somewhere like that. But it has to start somewhere, you see. And so what you could say is, well, okay, let's just wait. Let's wait for a pullback. What if we don't get a pullback? What if it just keeps going up? And then it's like, well, okay, you keep waiting, waiting, and then the trend's gone. So with things like this, it's, um, for me, if the trend is operating, if it's moving, I'm more likely to want to jump on it put a stop in that's fairly close and that way if i'm wrong okay i won't lose a lot or just put a really small position on it that i'm not that worried about if it sort of comes down and or even if i have to exit much lower because it's just an establishing trade it's like testing the water um and then if this then starts to really run and accelerate then we can add more to it so for me it's a buy i do want it to break this downward trend um but I like the fact that this looks like the beginning of something. It's an impulsive move from a base. So that for me is a good sign. That's that's great news. So you're liking where a lot of these things are at enough that this is the point that you start biting in. I did make some buys in this when it was down and I, I just couldn't help myself. I was like, I like network for a long time, long term. I have a lot of land in network. I stocked up on their land. And uh, yeah, I bought some more tokens uh, when it went low before it was just too good to pass up. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me, it's a buy. It's been a buy for about a month and a half, maybe even longer. So I price action is not as good as where it is, but I like what it's showing to. Mm. Let's, but I, I buy earlier than Paul does. Paul waits till you see a confirmation of the trend, especially because you have a lot of other options. I invest in crypto. You invest in like 17 different markets. So you can be patient and, and wait for the sweet spot where you're happy with. And that's what you've been doing. So it's, it's fun to see a lot of these things hitting the sweet spot where you like to make entries. Yeah. You want it, you want the macro picture to, to support it. And then you want it to respond. Um, for me, this would have been interesting in terms of what we call risk against reward around here, because you get that first breakout where it's sort of like woken up what's going on and then it's compressed. And then you get that, that next sharp move up those that's like, the, the time really where you go okay nobody's looking at this this is the time to get in we have run a bit further than that so the risk against reward is not so great here um which means that if if you buy it and then you get stopped out you've you've got to put your stop further away you're like your hiding point for the stop has got to be at a logical place which is where you may change your view on the chart so and that would be below this 44 cents area so whilst it's above 44 cents um I think you you would go with this being an impulsive developing trend. If it breaks below 44 cents, then something has gone wrong. Um, but I'd want to still want to see it close below it a couple of, by like a couple of days or maybe a week. Um, because sentiment is so bearish, sometimes when the market does rally like this, the long-term holders are just desperate to take a profit. So they start bailing out. So how well it can deal with that for me is a really good sign. So if it sticks around here for another week or two, that's, that'd be a really good sign. Even if it doesn't go up, I just want it to maintain where it is. That would be for me a, a bullish sign. Great. Let's take a look over at um, Illuvium. Yeah, I'm curious to take a deeper look at this myself. I haven't looked at the price on Illuvium for, gosh, a month maybe. Right, uh, ILV. So this one, let's try. Try that one again. No, it's not that one. Mm -mm. Okay, so this looks like it's it. Yes. That's it. Right. Whoa. So what we've got here, downward trend, of course, uh, we've got something that looks very triangular, which is a 
bit of a concern. Um, so when when you get a continuation of a trend, the market can go into a compression, and then before it does this, before it continues the main direction of trend. So this is normally a bearish pattern, and it's called a symmetrical triangle. So the market goes down, it sort of bounces between resistance and support, and it gets more and more compressed, and then it breaks in the main direction of the trend again. So I'd have to wait on this because it's kind of right in the middle of that. What I would like to see is it breaking this level here. So this, this sideways level here, you can see massive support and massive resistance. So it's, I love that symmetry. So if it starts to come up here, it will then negate the triangle. So it doesn't have to do much to do that. It just has to get into this zone that I'm showing you here. If it can get into that zone and then break this, as soon as it gets close to it, we'll be thinking, okay, this this is no longer a triangle, uh, a symmetrical triangle. Therefore, the downside is no longer in play. If the downside's not in play, the upside's in play, of course. So the the, the kind of balance starts to tip, the pendulum starts to tip towards bullish i can't say that now i hope you understand that i at this point in time it hasn't done it so i can't sort of you know event price action but i can say if it gets into this zone it would have made start to make a double bottom like the patterns that we've seen on this show just previously and if it does that then it will start joining the trend with the other markets now if it on the other side of it if it doesn't, if it stays in this range and stays compressed, that would be a bad sign. Um, it would mean that it's getting ready for another downward move. So whilst there's that indecision, I, I would say it's got to be a wait for me. But maybe this is the week where we get this resolution. So it'd be interesting to see when you see this show, whether it's broken out or not. So this would be a wait for you. This is also Definitely. a wait for me, even though I really like this project. It's about timing. And this price action shows what has happened over the past while well, they, they hit this really big number, almost gosh, like $1,800. So they're all the way down at 112, which is a lot more attractive than 1800. However, their token only started vesting for the pre-sale investors and the seed round investors like a number of months ago. And so they're going through token vesting which if you were a seed round investor, and I think the seed round price was like $3 and even some of the pre-sale pricing around eight or something, they're vastly in profits while the rest of their portfolios are down. So the likelihood that many of them are going to sell, pushing more downward pressure on it is high. Now, if the whole market starts swinging up and a lot of those investors will have higher expectation, they won't be as likely to sell because they'll want to take the ride up and, and it would go up. I just think there's too much downward price pressure versus a lot of other things that I'm interested in for me to be buying Bolivian. So it's a wait. If I had some, I might even sell it just because there's so many other things that I think the charts are just more bullish. And I personally would roll it into that. I can't tell you as a viewer what to do because we all have to own our own risks. That's just my thoughts, investor, what decision I would make. Cool. Let's take a look at formation finance or form. We haven't looked at this in a little while. Curious to get your takes. Yeah, I do remember the name. I can't place the chart. Um, if I'm honest with you. By, that's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't remember. Like sometimes I can remember the charts from memory it just because it kind of depends really i think it has been a bit too long since we've seen it um so yeah if i have talked about it in the interim i don't think i would have been bullish on it um because mm -hmm. i time we talked about it it was it was right at where it started dipping down lower like end of july was the last right. time we looked at it see where it started okay. running down more and we're both like wow that's concerning yeah, yeah. um so from what we can see here, things are actually becoming more interesting. So it's basing potentially, but this is such a small base. It's almost like um, in order to reverse a big trend like this, you, you sometimes need sort of really big swings and then a turnaround. I think 
with these crypto assets and the fact that they're not very um, aggressively traded or you, the volume is relatively low, you have to make allowances for it. So things can turn around in a major way, in a more unusual way, i.e. from a much smaller base. But <clears throat> this to me looks like an inverse head and shoulders. So we've got, this is the left shoulder, this is a head, and this is forming a right shoulder. So if you can't see what I mean, um, just think of it as it's gone down and now it's going sideways. We, what we want to see is a developing upward trend from this 6th of August. So we need to see it holding above this trend line. If We draw a trend line here. And it is very, very early days. Um, if it can hold above that and then break through this resistance here at 0 0.002787, that would be, that's the breakout point for me. That's where the, the base completes. So... I can't buy it here because it hasn't completed yet. But if it does break this level, then for me, it's a short-term buy. Now, the, why, the reason why it's a short-term buy is because what we do is we look at the height of the pattern. We project it up as a kind of minimum target. Now, it doesn't mean that it will definitely get there. It doesn't mean that it can't go beyond. Um, it's just a rule of thumb. It just says roughly how far do you expect this to go. And... If it completes, it will get to this resistance point, which roughly is, is where it's projecting. So that's 0 0.00381. So that would be a really good initial target for it. And then we'd have to see from there. But, you know, I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I want to see what it's going to do over the next few days. I think that's quite critical for this, because if it does move up a bit like the previous chart, um, you know, th this could well be forming a base. Anything that is so close to its all-time low, I think you've got to be very cautious of. You need, you do need. To, well, for me, see if you like the fundamentals, you'll buy it and see it as a great opportunity. But for me, I'll, I have to wait for it to confirm that the momentum is changing. I did buy just a bit of this recently, um, probably in the last week. Added to my position. Um, here's some things I like about it. Remember, like with. This is in the DeFi space, and essentially it'll be like a hedge fund um, where they, or an index fund for your crypto where they al algorithmically determine risk portfolios as like safer ones or like more risky, more tech growth. So kind of what people are used to in that way. And it's not proven that that theory will do well. I suspect it will. It's just DeFi hasn't been in focus for a long time as well as formation was going through token vesting like a lot of projects coupled by the downturn right so it's brought it way way down from almost 40 cents and it's really really low i think if, i don't even know what the seed round was but if i had to guess it was around a penny or so so it's below seed round price what i like about it is the fully diluted market gap is 2.3 million the total market cap is under 400,000. so now, this also puts it in a very risky category. It could go to zero. The team could run out of funds, close their doors, close up shop, and your tokens become almost worthless. If it goes the other way and it goes, we get some momentum, money comes back into the market, and then it goes to, say, a $100 million market cap. Well, that's 300, almost 300x from here, right? So that's exciting to me and so i put some more money into it um yeah just just in the last week cool um great suggestion by one of our viewers let's take a look at cornucopias i'm really excited to look at this one let me share your chart okay so oh for me this was a buy personally i i did buy some by the way and so paul this was a wait for you right just you want to see more Okay, yeah, I, I I sort of remember it, but um, it's uh, what was the code for it? Oh, here we go. Uh, cornucopias, yeah. There we yeah. Go. Okay, so we've got some crazy oh. spikes on here. Maybe that's um, <laughs> not not real, but uh, would it be nice if it was closing up there. <laughs> now, what, what I see, yeah, so I I am a it, I would have been a wait on it, um, but again, you see, this is this is interesting that we're seeing more and more bases 
forming and very similar bases to the top that the US dollar was making, in the dollar index. So we've got like an inverse head and shoulders here. So this is the left shoulder. This is the head. This is the right shoulder. I'll show you the neckline. So this has gone from being a kind of weight to, to a buy. So this is a buy as long as it stays above. Let me show you where it negates. It will negate on a break of the um, on a break of the right shoulder. So as long as it holds over this 0 0.0155 level, um, this would be bullish. This is bullish. So this is a reversal pattern. I'm ignoring this price action, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but um, but this is an inverse. I, I don't know if for me I can see this. I don't know if it looks maybe it looks strange to you. I, I can understand that because when you first start looking at charts, um, you think you know what is that. Um, but what I'm doing is, let me show you. Let me make it clearer. So if I change that to a line chart, Matt, perhaps you can see what I'm I'm kind of framing out to get the overall um, breakdown of what the price action is doing. So if we take this line here, we can do this. We can pop that there and that like that and say, okay, it's now in an upward trend. So this is why I can say it's a buy because before that I couldn't say that it was forming a a base of any kind or at least attempting to move into an upward trend um so I'm, i would miss the low and it doesn't guarantee that i'm going to be right but it's at least we're sort of trading in the right direction at least it's moving in the right direction um and so so yeah for me it is it is uh looking interesting in fact it should move given the timing of the right shoulder and the way it's sort of pressing against it i would hope that it moves fairly quickly in the next few days um now don't don't sort of hold me to that because this is only what it should do what it actually does is what it's going to do um and it may may not do anything it may just come down and break this line and, and go lower but that's the best it's looked for a while so you are looked at it based on the probabilities for you you would take that probability yeah. Which yeah. there's no guarantees in this. Sometimes people are like, I want to know what's going to happen. Is like for that, you need a magic crystal ball. And if you find one of those, please tell me where you got it. One that works because there's no such thing. What we do as investors, the most savvy investor, they don't have a magic crystal ball. They're just taking guesses. They're taking educated guesses on where it's going to go based on yeah. experience. You want you want the probability to move in your favor. I mean, yes. you, you can ha you can have an open goal and miss it. You know, it's like nothing is guaranteed. That's that's how things are. So we will on on the show at some point see something that I'll say is a 90 percent cert, which is probably about as far as I'd ever say. Yeah. Um, when I see that, I, I will tell you. Um, and even then it, it might not happen. But there's some that are just so very, very clear. And as hopefully people have seen over the few weeks and, and months, there are times when it isn't clear. We have to wait. So you wait for it to look more probabilistic in your favor, in the favor of the direction that it looks like it's going to go. And then when it does, you've got to act. So um, there's a lot of sitting on your hands when you're in a reversal pattern. And then it starts to, to, to complete. And that's when you've got to do something, which is what it's looking like now. So overall summary, uh, you saw a number once that you're like, I like the price action on that. That looks like what tells me I want to buy and put some stop losses in in case it does go the other side. That way I'm protected. Yeah. But um, yeah, there was a number of them that you're like, that's where I'd like to see it. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Well, I think that's all of them. Oh, did we had another one. Uh, yeah. I, I, th I, think one? I thought there was a couple it's more. Actually. Yeah, let's take a look at it. I'm uh, looking at the wrong thing. I am looking okay. at the wrong thing. It okay. only had a summary of some of them. Oh, so is it uh, is it Solana? Was that the next one? Yeah, Solana was one of our suggestions. ShopX, and then one I hadn't heard of before that we'll take a look at. Okay, brilliant. Always love the new ones. Um, so Solana, Solana is um, they had all that bad news, didn't they, back here, and they market did. didn't didn't really move that much lower so that was a good sign that um someone was hoovering up into the the negative news um i like this trend line i think it's it's um it's moving up but it's 
unfortunately it needs to accelerate and it needs to accelerate soon um, because this is an undecided reversal of the trend. And what I mean by that is it's like, um, it, it, whilst it's moving up, you see how it, the waves or the, these moves are kind of overlapping themselves. So people will buy a, a high breakout, you buy the high breakout, it comes all the way back. Then you buy another high breakout, it comes all the way back. The only thing that's moving in its favor is that the overall trend and these lows are rising. So what I'd like to see is a shift in gears where it goes into a new rate of, of um, ascending price action. And so that will probably happen if it breaks 46, which I would, you know, I'd, I'd hope that will happen. So although I think the structure of it is still OK and, and generally bullish, I would think I'd like to wait just for that final kind of confirmation, which would be a move through 46 or an acceleration towards 46. So if you're watching it day to day and it suddenly starts running towards that that level, what I like to do sometimes is buy ahead of the breakout, knowing that it might not break out, but there could be enough momentum to take it through that level. So if it does that, you can see it's good resistance there. Um, so if it takes that 47, then we should be, you know, with the wind behind it, looking at a move to around sort of 70, 75, maybe 76. So I think it'd be worth waiting for confirmation there. But that's the line. I think I'd be 60, 40 bullish while it's over that line as well. And given the, the broader macro position, I'd be more inclined to be bullish. So this is a wait till you see if it breaks that. And if it breaks that, then that's your trigger to say, OK. Yeah, there, there isn't such a clear reversal pattern there for me. Um, what I look for is like a trigger line. Um, and so this would have been the breakout point at 42. But it, it sort of did that and then came all the way back down. It's done it twice. So what it's done is built up resistance just above that. So I want to see it break the resistance just above that. Um, so if it clears that for me, that would be a really good positive sign. Yeah. Um, for me, this is a wait, possibly even a, a sell, um, just because there's other options that I like better. Now, uh, part of it's just personal preference. I don't keep a lot of blue chips. I like the higher risk stuff because when they move up, they move up faster. And so Solana's market cap is very high compared to a lot of the other things I'm following. In fact, Solana is presently at a $14 billion market cap. And a lot of stuff I'm investing in has a market cap between 300,000 to a hundred million. And so they just can move farther faster if the overall market does better. So not that there's anything wrong with Solana. They had a hack. They're just working through some kinks. It's essentially a blockchain in beta. And so they, they went a build fast and let things break approach. Cardano took a build slow so that we run into a lot less breaks. And um, so Cardano doesn't have these same level of problems, but they've been in development longer and they took a slow methodical approach. So which one will end up doing well in the future? Uh, there's some big ones betting on Solana. Personally, I'm a big fan of Cardano. It's one of the few blue chips I have, but don't count Solana out. It's been down and stuff for a while. So the reason I'm, I actually have sold this just recently is because I, I moved it into a cult. So I wanted more Comey. I sold. I didn't have a whole lot of Solana, but it was more about selling a blue chip for a higher risk, can move farther, faster type play. Cool. Let's take a look over at, uh, let's look at ShopX and then we'll look at KubeCoin. Okay. So that's split. Yes, isn't it? that's split. Yeah. Is that, uh, no, that's not up to date. Yeah, that ShopX token, it was up there. Um, that should be Shop, it. ShopX token, yeah, that one. Yeah, that should be it. Okay, that looks that looks better. Um, so this is this is on a knife edge. This is balanced. So you can see this is the downward main downward trend that we've got, and that triangular constriction that I was talking about in, in one of the other charts is similar to what's going on here. Um, so if we take this as a central point, let's draw a line through there. And you can see that it's it's traded 
above and below this kind of central line in a very symmetrical way. So it's gone down and it's matched it with a move up and it's gone down, hasn't actually managed to break higher. Um, and it's, it's around this kind of central point. It seems to be stuck. So there's a lot of indecision that tells me people aren't sure what to do with this. And personally, I would have to wait until it clears this indecision. Now that will happen if we form a base and that base will come on a break. I'm going to say that those two are spikes, are data spikes, and take the, the kind of meat of that top there around 0 0.05. So around five cents. If it breaks five cents, then it will look like base one, base two, and then we can talk about a reversal. Um, where this does not look good and where things start to become a bit worrying is if it takes out this support here at 0.0325. It's done that twice. If it closes like down here, th that would look very heavy. And to be fair, it needs to prove itself because the main trend has been down. Um, so that's why I need a bit more confirmation here before jumping in. And, and I'd perhaps have to be even cautious then. But if it can break this level here at five cents, then it'll look good. So let's hope it does. Yeah, it's it's way down probably around their pre-sale prices, maybe even below. Um, I like that part of it. Uh, you know, I hold a lot of shop decks that I've accumulated over the past while. So for me, it's just a wait because I hold a lot of this. It's interesting at these prices. If I didn't have so much, I would probably buy a little bit. Um, so it's kind of between a wait and a buy. Paul is definitely a wait. Cool. Yeah, I, I can see. You see, I do that as well. I know exactly what you're doing. You're like, mm, it's at such a good level. You just want to nibble some, but then you think, well, but it's not actually better than potentially something else. Because that's always the the thing. It's it's not just it on its own. It's like, what else could you buy that maybe looks better? We all have limited funds, right? Even yeah. when you have millions of dollars, you you just have more funds, but they're limited too. And yeah. so you're always sac you're looking at opportunity cost. Well, if I put it in here, that means I can't put it in there. Yeah. So exactly. And sometimes you have trades that are effectively the same thing because they're moving the same way. So you may as well just buy more of something else as opposed to splitting it between two. It again, I mean, I say that, but sometimes that can be a good strategy because maybe one will will survive and the other one won't but from a technical perspective when you see things that look very similar uh, they end up being pretty much the same trade um that's that's how it looks kind of technically but when something is cheap and it looks like it's turning around cheap is obviously in inverted commas it could just move a little bit in percentage terms it's a massive move so it was i let's take a look over at cute coin um, this one, yeah. uh, real quick. So just I went to the web page on what this is. Basically, it's a travel and leisure coin um, on the Cardano blockchain. I haven't seen a lot of these travel and leisure altcoins do well over the long term that have come out. In the five years I've been in crypto, I've probably seen 10 or 12 different ones. And eventually, they all usually do poorly. Why are you yeah. going to pay for travel or leisure in a coin? It's like, oh, you get discounts. Well, doesn't Travelocity already handle that? Like, there's, we don't need a cryptocurrency to do this. So already I'm biased against this one. Mm. Obviously, looking at the charts biases me further. I, now, I love a lot of stuff on Cardano, but just because it's built on the Cardano ecosystem, nah, for me, so, this, this yeah, so no. Yeah, it's the same for me, really, because the trend is is still down. But what, I, I didn't quite catch what you're saying that they do. Um, They're in the travel and leisure. Let me let me share with you my. Uh, let me take a look at their website here. So, hmm. Kipcoin, the digital currency that aims to revolutionize the leisure and travel industry, universally adoptable through multi-brand platforms built on Cardano. So. 
you know, and, and they're showing an app here that you can send and receive KubeCoin. Mm -hmm. Really, why does somebody want to pay in KubeCoin? They can pay in Bitcoin. They can pay in other things. So sometimes altcoins have this, uh, you know, th some weakness to it. Hey, in order to buy our thing, you have to use our coin. And that's our whole mechanism for the tokenomics behind it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, unless their whole idea becomes really big that everyone's using it, then that altcoin isn't necessarily, that's not enough use case for it. So yeah. a few have done well, like Sandbox, they've become big enough that people are like, okay, I'm going to actually use the Sand token to buy stuff in Sandbox. Same thing with Decentraland. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen a single one of the 12 leisure companies do well in the long term that doesn't mean they can't in the short term yeah uh well the, the chart sort of says it already i mean that's just a, a a a downward trend for the moment it could change of course and if it breaks the trend line that i've drawn up there um for you then i would maybe start i would start to think about a reversal here but i'm slightly cautious on it because it's underperforming the rest of the market and things are turning around so it, it may may catch up if everything else has already gone a long way so it, it would take a bit of convincing to get in it but i would never say never um because the market keeps evolving so but yeah i don't quite understand the use case either which is a bit of a concern for the viewer who suggested this don't think like i i'm biased by historical like what i've seen right and, and i could be wrong on this i don't know the founders of kubecoin but I would ask you, why use KubeCoin? You've got all these different things like Travelocity, Airbnb, all these things that you can use fiat. So, so why are we going to use some altcoin that's new on the space? Um, probably because in the Cardano ecosystem, it pumped from its IDO or its initial offering. And... Uh, for me, the reason I put this as a sell, if I had some, I'd be selling it because I expect further uh, decreases. That doesn't mean at some point it wouldn't be low enough that I look at it and I say, I want to buy it. I'm looking at it right now, and the current market cap is $33 million, which is crazy high. A uh, fully diluted market cap of $64 million. For me, this is, if I had some, I would absolutely sell it because I think as more vesting continues to happen, the price are going to continue to go down and probably for a while. Lo I would love to be wrong on that. I'm, I'm wrong every once in a while. But that's if I had some, I would absolutely be selling it. And I'd be rolling it into other ones that have gone through the vesting curve. A lot of their pre-sell tokens are vested and out there. Their market cap's been savage. Their market cap used to be 50 million or 100 million, and now it's... 500,000 or a million or 3 million like shop X's was around that place and their market cap used to be like a hundred million. So uh, a lot better to buy it when the market caps already way down than buy and hold through watching that happen. And that's my, uh, that's my guess. It was going to happen here. Yeah, cool. Well, it's still good to see other, other things. So I appreciate it. And um, you know, I hope, if you're holding it and or if you're the company itself, I hope you prove us wrong and it goes up and I'd be more than happy to buy it if the yeah. chart changes. And, and obviously the viewer suggested that he probably knows way more fundamentally than what's going on. So there might be things that I don't know that, he, that they know that they're like, ah, Rain's wrong on this. And I would love to be wrong on this. Uh, by all means, uh, comment in the comments below what your thoughts on it were. But thank you for bringing it up. Um, if you have some viewer suggestions for next time, like some ones you want us to look at, Put them in the comments below and we'll bring this up uh next week we'll talk about it um limited to two though please paul thanks so much for joining us i have a few words i want to share with the audience before i go yeah always a pleasure thanks guys and see you next time all right don't you love having paul join us he's such a wealth of knowledge and i love his personality so warm knowledgeable I can see why a lot of people really value everything he has to say. I really value everything he has to say. So we're in this crypto winter slash bear market and prices are way, way down. And this is the hardest time to stick in here. And yet you're here. You really should congratulate yourself on that. 
down the road, yourself and probably your families will be very grateful that you stuck through the pain that it is to be here. And um, it's when, if you really see what is happening here, it's really exciting to be here right now. And you might not be feeling that just because we're human beings, we get hit with emotions. Um, when the market does turn around, you're going to congratulate yourself for all the hard work you've done through this bear market that we've been in. Thanks so much for joining us. The crypto market is slow right now. Just know that the good decisions you made and you make during these pullbacks, they lead to life-changing ones when the market turns around. This wrap is for all of you rainmakers. All right. I wrote this. Charlie from the UK performed it. That's not me singing. He's much better than me. Came into the space, chasing all of the games, chasing the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh, shit, right before you could. It was going to buy when it was pouring like a rain, making sure. And why when it's down, don't chase the posts that I miss, uh. Cause I always made the time in mind. I sit the one out, cause I'm patient like that. Hands off, wait for the right time. I sell when it's high, I buy when it's low. They call me rich, they call me smart. I'm just a rainmaker running the show. Calculated investments, I don't leave with my heart. The principles are simple, they're leaving a lot. Why when it's boring, just gotta be smart. I sell when it's hype, like all the channels they pump it. That's when I was selling a parabolic to dump it. They call me rich, they call me smart. I'm a rainmaker, making my own star I'm with the future Learning the past Makes the time fly by Years going so fast The game plan is mine I'll own it now When I reach the top Hey, it's asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker Investments I love And I follow what I learn Not relying on luck uh, Time is never better The time like the present The next five years is a gift And it's feeling like heaven I'm committed to learn Studying to know that nothing comes easy, but when knowledge the game show Thinking at this one consumer will come a bear market. Learning and growing and when it's slow would be the target. They say it's come out, Bitcoin is dead. The massive decreases can get to your head. Sticking around, the time is better. Strong like that, I'll let the others be fretters. Two years time, the ball will bring back the games. That makes it worth the effort, cause here comes the rain. So let's go rain makers, let's make it all happen. The goal with the hate, say the haters be cracking. I'm here for five years, let's do this together. The time is right, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own star I'm with the future, learning the past Made the time fly by, years going so fast This game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, hey, it's asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Haters be hating, the time has slowed down Addressing what to say when I'm wearing my crown They're chasing green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger, helping me to push through I'm still human and sometimes it is rough and that's what makes me special simply I stay tough because I'm a rainmaker investments I love and I follow what I learn not relying on luck uh.